All right. Uh, let's see just how good this is. All right. Well, all right. It looks to be holding up. I'm going to share this video out to a couple places. Uh, I'll share that out to you. There. And we'll do this as long as we can while uh, the broadcast holds up. And then we're going to share this to you. one other group. Whoops, not my timeline. Sharing a group. Crafters Guild. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you get that little business out of the way. This is always the awkward part of the stream where you wonder, is your stream actually going out? You wonder if the broadcast quality is holding up. And you wonder if anybody can actually hear the words that you're saying. Uh, since, it's a, uh, since it's a broadcast... All right, I don't need these on. I can hear through that. Okay, I am going to mute the audio there. Just monitor that. Okay, so here it is. I'm live crafting tonight. Some of you may have seen in the various groups on the Terrain Domain and on uh, on the Crafters Guild, Tabletop Crafters Guild, and over on Absolute Tabletop uh, that I recently built this. This is just a quick scratch built piece uh, used for displaying. In this case, I didn't quite plan it right to be able to display uh, an owl bear, but it does a wonderful job of displaying for uh, Gandalf or other 28 millimeter miniatures. And without this single piece here, this debris moved in different places, it can work for a variety of miniatures. So I'm going to make another one of these. Um, and I'm doing this because in uh, along with, actually, I don't know if anybody's, if anybody's leaving comments, I can't see them. So I'm going to open the video over here and see. Oh, yeah, that's weird. All right. Well, it looks like a couple people have said hey. So, all right. Sorry about that little intrusion there. Um, for whatever reason, the comments weren't showing Okay, so what I'm going to do is over the next hour, maybe two hours, maybe 30 minutes, we'll see what happens with the stream. Man, that quality. Okay, I may not do this. That stream looks terrible. Can somebody in the comments let me know if it's as pixelated as I think it is? Because if it's this bad, it's not, there's not going to be any point in live crafting for you guys. 
I don't know what just happened. I have high speed internet and apparently the high winds that are going on are dramatically affecting my ability. I couldn't even stream to Twitch. This is really frustrating. Yeah, it just took a huge dip, and I don't know why. I'm going to do a quick speed test. Because I really want to be able to do a quality build for you guys. Because the plan is to turn these into one of these. Along with some awesome stuff that I have uh, from Huge Miniatures. But, man... You know what? I'm going to power through. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, if it gets too bad, I'll stop. All right. Enough tech crap. Let's build one of these. So what I've got here is standard XPS foam, the kind you use for insulating uh, your home. I've already pre-cut these pieces. This is a 4-inch by 4-inch piece. Uh, I measured this one out to, for height, uh, measured it out to two inches, and I think I just rough cut it. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's just a hair over five, but we're going to cut this one down. The idea is to end up with something similar to this uh, with the broken pieces, and this is, all of this except for the tree comes from these two pieces right here. And I'm going to show you how to do that really quick really easy uh, hold on a second I inadvertently knocked my trash over. okay so let's start with our base here like I said this is pre-cut to four inches this is a uh, highly calibrated, very expensive tool, but I think every uh, crafter should have one of these in their toolbox, and that is a pencil. I do a lot of my stuff with pencil. And what we're going to do here is we are just going to very simply mark our, we're going to mark at one inch intervals. I'm going to do that across. in two directions but first this is going to seem a little counterintuitive but i want you to be able to see what i'm doing here and i'm not too worried about if these aren't quite why did they come across you know this piece is not square in the long run it's not going to matter because of the way it's sitting There may be the hasty nature in which I'm doing this, but I don't think so. so. Next, we mark here, here, here. And that's thrilling. This, unfortunately, um, the making of bricks and shapes and stuff like this <laughs> can be a bit tedious, but don't worry, it's going to get exciting. I'm lying. It's not going to get exciting. But if you like crafting and you like the sound of my voice, you're in the right place. So this is how I like to do my, whether it's tiles, bricks, whatever, and we're going to do the bricks in a moment. Take a nice sharp exacto blade and just very lightly cut in for each of these lines. A lot of times I wouldn't have actually marked those ahead of time, but I just wanted to make sure everything was looking good. I would actually, what I would have done is just use the blade. I'm just dipping in, 
Dragging the blade across, letting the blade do the work. That's where it's good to have a nice sharp blade before you start your project. And back to our highly calibrated pencil. Uh, Mark, yes, this is insulation foam, uh, pink XPS. And then I just take and I drag the pencil through these marks, and it's going to go a little bit deeper. But it's putting that bevel of those blocks in there. This is very early in the process, obviously. One thing I really like about this is when you do longer projects, this foam actually will kind of keep your pencil sharp um, as you continue to draw through there. Coffee shot. Ah. All right. So now I know that this display piece, I want to have some area that's showing that's going to have the tree growing up in it and all that. So these are actually going to get cut out of here. These pieces here. And this is where what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm not very good at this. Uh, this is uh, that method where you just kind of use your finger as a guide. Let's go a little bit deeper. And we'll go down this side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip in a little bit more, make sure I go down just a little deeper. This is just on these outside pieces. Uh, looks like we got quite a few people tuned in, so thanks for tuning in. Um, the intention was for this to be on Twitch and then later show up on um YouTube, uh, and then get shared to these groups. But I don't know why. I don't know why um, I just couldn't get the stream to go through on Twitch. I'm still learning Twitch. But I figured I'd bring it home to Facebook where I got started with all you lovely peeps. So if you're new to Mini Terrain Domain, uh, be sure to give the Facebook page a like. Keep an eye out for future updates. And uh, you can check out Mini Terrain Domain on YouTube and Twitch as well. So now this, what I'm doing is, this is one of these uh, snap blade type things, but a lot of us like these for the length of the blade. Um, and what I'm going to do is try not to cut myself, but where I cut that line already, I'm just going to, and I'm kind of cutting away from myself. I'm just following what I've already done. I'm going to do that again here. And this is how we make the delicious candies. I haven't eaten yet, so I'm hungry. Don't worry, I'm not going to eat my foam core. Uh... So, that was not very even. The good thing is, this area is all ground. And guess what? It doesn't really have to be even. The point is just to get that depth, that difference in depth. And then another tool that I like to get, I usually pick these up at, uh, I pick them up, in a big pack in Walmart or sometimes the dollar store, but uh, emery boards. Just like sandpaper. I'm actually not too worried about what's going on down here because all of this is going to get, all of this is going to get covered by uh, flocking material. So we're going to keep a couple of these. 
And it really doesn't matter where they came from. We're going to keep a couple of these here. Um, I'm going to plug in my hot glue gun so it's heating up, which it should have been doing all along. Bring that back over here. All right. All right, so hot glue gun is... This one doesn't have a light, but hot glue gun is heating up because I'm going to be using that to do a lot of this stuff. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to keep all of this intact. And then actually... So these are my trees. Sorry, I'm just moving a couple screens around real quick. They're getting mixed up when I plugged in the laptop. All right. So these are my trees. And I'm going to find the right tree to use. I'm going to go with something a little bit bigger like that. And I just want to make sure that the base is going to have enough room. So, yeah, kind of like what we did here. Uh, the tree is just going to sit off in the corner um, over here and kind of extend out over the edge a little bit. So I know i got plenty of room there. So what I want to do is kind of figure out what's the area. And this one I'm actually making for my son, and he wants to be able to display his owl bear mini. So I've got to make sure that, there's plenty of room for the owl bear miniature to stand there. And what I'm going to do is just kind of draw in where some of this is broken up. Just like that. I'm going to put Uncle Owl Bear over there. Put that there. So this part is pretty easy too because we're just going to go jagged edges and just kind of rough cut. And over here as well. And then, just kind of like we did earlier, I'm going to hold on to that. Try to, this, when you start getting really thin with this pink foam, it starts to stick with static electricity. This is also where these long blades come in handy. And then, I don't care. If, it, if I have to break it, because that'll help add to that effect. There we go. So here's these pieces. Now, what I'm going to do, because I'm probably going to use these uh, right where they are. Just kind of broke away a little bit. I'm actually going to take this one. Create another break. And then this came off the corner, and I want that corner to break off. So we'll break that off. Yeah, that'll go good. Uh, we'll leave this one like it is. So here's where, again, these memory boards come in great. Howdy to everybody else that's popping in. I see quite a few people. Uh, Jeremy, uh, Mick is in there. Uh, Andre, thanks everybody for stopping by. So what I'm going to do is along these edges is I, I use the edge of the emery board. 
and I just real quick, I just knock into all the edges. And I forgot where this piece was from. Uh, yeah, it was this one. Just, yeah, here we go. Because the idea is that these pieces broke off a long time ago. It's weathered, and this is the weathering. Whoops. This is just the first part of what I'm doing here. And this is off the corner. Whoop. So we'll do the same thing. One of the things I like to do when I'm working, oops, to stay in the camera here, when I'm working on stuff like this, is try to keep the shapes, the pieces, more or less uh, in position, just so I can remember where they go. Especially with these little pieces. So that goes there. These two go there. This one is that piece. Nope, I haven't textured the stone yet, Jeremy. I like to get some of my big uh, weathering portions in there. And then um, I'm actually cutting a little bit too much there. I'm kind of wanting that to stay like part of the wall on the backside. So I'm going to... I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. Just so it's not as big of a jump there. And then I'm just going to, same thing, I'm just going to kind of hit into these outside edges. Maybe kind of get the edge there. And I am not gentle. This is all where the outside edges are. All right. So there's that. And then I should probably get some new this stuff has gotten pretty, pretty tight, but it's a good old foil ball here. Yep. You got it, Jason. This is pink foam insulation. I know the coloring, the white balance is a little screwy, so it's throwing it off, but this is one that I've been using for a while, this particular, and I'm just kind of rolling it around in my fingers, and I'm knocking it down onto the stone and what's great is when you get to that final dry brushing and wash stage is these are the details that really pop don't be afraid to just slam into it and then i got don't forget your broken off pieces here Whoops, that's the bottom side. All right, so hot glue gun is probably good and fired up. I kind of forgot how that was. Oh, so here we go. So what we're going to do is, oh, I'm getting off the side here. I'll put a little dollop on there. And I'm just sliding it out away from where it was originally. I'm not too worried about the glue that uh, is seeping out because, again, all this is going to get covered in flocking material. And as a reminder, uh, uh, the fine folks over at Huge Miniatures were kind enough to send me some flocking materials. Um, that I will be using, particularly a cherry blossom for the trees and uh, some bright static grass 
uh, that is really nice looking. Now I can't remember how these two were. Uh, I think they were like this. So just get a little dabble, do you? Like my seventh grade woodshop teacher always said about glue. A little dabble, do you? Now, it's kind of a dealer's choice when you're deciding if you're going to use hot glue, if you're going to use uh, PVA glue, which is your, you know, your white Elmer's glue type. I chose to go with hot glue because I'm doing this as a live crafting. Um, I wanted glue that was going to uh, set up a lot quicker. With the PVA, um, I think you can get a little bit. You know, obviously, you don't have to deal with all the wisps and burns and all that good stuff. But like I said, it's dealer's choice. Uh, for this one, I'm going to slap a dollop down there. And we're going to put this piece here. And... So these kind of are broken off, and you can see they pushed away, but we don't have anything here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little thicker one, and I'm going to do this. And then we'll do a quick... I should point out that the surface that I'm on is just cardboard. <laughs> it's not really a cutting board. i going to be careful cutting into that. All right, that broke off, but guess what? It doesn't matter. Hit it with, the, with that. Slop a dollop there. Yeah, see, this is why I don't like the... I don't really care for the hot glue for this kind of an application. I just get spread out a little bit. All right, and then when we get to the uh, flocking stage, I'm actually going to put down uh, some stone, uh, a mixture of stones that'll help fill in some of this gap here. And so now, this is our base. So now we're going to move to the next section. This is a little tedious, so I won't be surprised if I lose a couple of you during this section. Um, you can always save these uh, pieces that you cut off for other things. I typically leave them sit over here until I get tired of them and throw them away if I don't immediately do something with them. Um, oh, I, let me jump back here. There is one thing I wanted to do. Uh, let's see. We know we want our owl bear. So... I need to make sure there's room for him to sit in there. So I'm going to real light. That may show through in the painting, but I don't care. I just need to know where, because I want to put some debris in here, but I need to make sure it doesn't interfere with the owl bear. And then one thing I like to do, and actually we could do this to kind of help is I want to give a shout out to uh, um, give a shout out to Jeremy uh, Black Magic Craft um, who pointed out I think he pointed it out as a as a pet peeve of his but pointing out that some of us were making cracks in these kind of Watch me cut wrong again towards myself. We were making cracks in our in our uh, blocks that were only going part way. And as somebody who works in the construction trade, um, he pointed out that when you have blocks that crack, they go all the way across. So I'm going to try not to overdo it, and I'm just going to have some of these cracks go through. I'm going to do something similar to what I did on the other one. 
And then I like to, you know, draw in with my knife and then get that depth with the pencil. And then I want to do, like I did here, is I'm going to... We're going to come across like this. And let's see, how do we do that? Yeah. And then we come across like this. Yeah, I think that's just what I did. And then... I want there to be a hole. I'm making a deliberate kind of gap in the stone here. Because I want to have some grass that's actually grown up through there. And through these cracks. We're going to use the uh, static grass for that. So I'm going to push a little harder. Widen these out a little bit. All right. So there's our base. Boom. Now, I'm going to do something a little different than what I did with this last one, uh, where I cut these walls separately. I know that I want the wall to go along the three inches here and about two inches here, but we're also going to break off some of the edges like we did here. So what I'm going to do with this being just a hair over five is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to mark out my bricks. I'm just doing bricks uh, for the ease here. Um, this is actually just a hair under two inches. Uh, this does look square. So I'm actually going to deliberately have the short part at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to go, I like to do a quarter inch. So I'm just marking every quarter inch and you see we get a little bit of a short bit up there that's fine it's gonna end up actually uh coming out almost like a capstone kind of thing even though they're shorter walls i like to find that place that is between uh realism oh between realism and uh not I don't go for total accuracy in realism. I cheat it. That's what I do. I cheat it to a certain point where if you look too closely, you'll see the flaws. But if you don't look close, if you're looking from the the uh, distance that most people are at the gaming table, then you're fine. Now, I have a thicker ruler I like to use for this that helps to keep the blade on track. And I didn't grab it. Um, I always use my fingernail to get the globs that squish out. For some reason, I always exclaim, ouch, as if in surprise. Yeah, that's me. Yep. A heat gun is a great way to get rid of wisps. Yeah, I do. I do have a heat gun, Jeremy, um, that we'll be using actually to cheat the painting process here in a little bit um, to speed it up. And I'm actually going to skip a step with this one in the interest of speed as well. Um, normally, I would recommend, and I, I actually don't like it when people do this, so I don't know why I'm doing it. When somebody's doing a tutorial and they say, well, this is how you should do it, but I'm not going to do it here. Um, so maybe I will do it. And the, the part I'm talking about is the uh, Black Magic Craft um, base coat of Mod Podge, Bod Podge. I'm not spray painting it, so it's not technically necessary. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking where the edge of my lines are. I'm just eyeballing them across to complete this edge. Doing the 
this on both sides. I'm rather astonished that there are 30 plus people that are so bored on a Tuesday night that they're watching me craft this, but hey, thanks for tuning in. Now, this is where you can, you want to be careful. I've been doing this for a while. It doesn't mean I'm an expert, but I just try to keep my eye on where those marks are that I already hit. And then I'm eyeballing to make sure that the uh, the brick line is coming across as square. And then we'll cheat it with the pencil a little bit because drawing that line, eyeballing the, the continuation around the edges, you can actually misalign your bricks. And when you're doing two-sided, um, particularly in a, in a terrain piece that's going to see play, you want to be careful. And, and and if this were something that we're going to see play, I would actually use two pieces. I, I like to do uh, foam core or thin cut XPS like this with cardboard sandwiched in between for strength and durability. And then for this uh, last bit here, what the capstone is, again, eyeballing. Uh, there we go. So those are our, our lengthwise bricks. And again, doing that uh, highly calibrated pencil. And honestly, I don't know why. I just prefer these uh, Murado Black Warrior pencils. I buy them two or three boxes at a time off of Amazon. I still have quite a few left. I just like them. They're a good solid pencil. Now, with this thin foam, what you got to be careful of when I was dragging that knife across there is you really compromise the durability. And this is where I was talking about where I would, you know, do two layers and sandwich up because this is now cut in from both sides and have actually created a uh, very flexible piece that is nowhere near as durable as what it was. So you can see and if I kept going I would snap that right off. So you want to be careful of that. The more you cut into it the more delicate it becomes. So now we went with quarter inch. What I'm going to do is, first off, I should have done this before I started, but oh well. I'm actually going to cut that down here because I want, I want that to be on an even five inches so we'll just uh yeah see here's a you can see where coming in from both sides how close that got why that's so uh that integrity is so compromised whoops actually i'm going to do that with the knife And it's kind of funny because <laughs> I know for a fact that this end is not going to see any action. Uh, it's actually going to get broken off. So I don't know why I'm spending the time to do that. All right. So now what we're going to do here is every half inch on the first course here, I'm making a mark. These are our brick lines. This is the tedious part. This is where you guys start to check out. And then on the next row, the same thing. I like to just for the ease of it. I'm going to go. I'm just eyeballing these. 
uh, up through the middle. Again, every half inch. Now what I've got here, let's see if I can bring this other lamp in. Got like three lamps over here. My old eyes struggle with this. Sorry if that washes out a little bit. Um, what I've done is I brought in my magnifier so I can see these lines easier. And I'm just going to continue them every other, just like you'd expect with bricks, every other course. So when I built my pyramid, oh, hey, look, Jake's talking about his pyramid again. Oh, man. Do you ever get tired of that? No. I spent 100 hours building it. I'm going to talk about it for 100 years. I estimated that I hand-drew approximately 10,000 bricks on the pyramid. So I had four wall sections that were double thick that had uh, smaller bricks mixed with larger bricks. And they were 14 inches on the side. Actually, it might have been 18. I just remember that the interior walls alone took eight hours to etch. So, so I'm trying to just kind of cheat this and go a little quick. This is going to be by far the slowest, most tedious portion of this live crafting. So I'm trying to go as quick as possible. My plan is to... In another hour or less have the whole thing done except for the glue that will be drying but we'll have it completely painted in the next hour so just quick little crafts you can do when you're in between or you're waiting for something bigger or they make nice gifts like I said my son saw the one I made and asked if I could make one for him to display his owl bear. And he wanted he wanted the cherry blossoms. And this isn't the end of it here because of course we gotta texture it. So there's that side. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I figured. I started texturing bricks and I lost like 10 people. That does not surprise me at all. And so what I'm going to do here is what we did on the sides. I'm going to take where these top pieces were. Move this so you can see a little better. And I'm just, again, eyeballing across. Coffee break. It's late enough. I got out a beer. Oh, like I said, this is the. This is tedious, but what I find when I'm doing big crafting projects, and I've got another a dice tower that I'm working on that's got a lot of brick and stone work. And what I do is I uh, what I do is I put on TV shows and stuff and stream in the background. Um, and I find this very therapeutic. So I'm finding that not all of my comments are showing up um, on the one side. So I didn't realize people were still talking. Um, Jeremy, I don't know how long ago you said this. You said you're going to Mod Podge. I think I'm going to Mod Podge it. We'll see. Uh, it's relaxing and educational. This is my first live crafting vid and kind of loving it. Definitely worth my Tuesday night. Well, thank you, Paige. I appreciate that. 
Um, I'm glad you've chosen to spend it with us. So I think, are you going to pin it in place for added structure? Am I going to pin what in place? The walls? I'm probably not going to pin them. Like I said, this is a display piece. So, I mean, this piece here, uh, you're going to see here, um, I'm, this is actually interlocked. Um, combined with the glue. This is actually pretty durable. Um, I would actually use this as a play piece. Um, the only thing that's not is I haven't fully, I never put a sealer on it. So uh, this stuff isn't kind of sealed in place. I still have to spray seal this. So, all right, we just got one more side here and then we'll get under the texturing. Um, so I'm going to bring my magnifier in. All right, folks, once I finish up uh, etching, the blade etching on this side, then we'll get to a little more exciting with some texturing and stuff. I have not yet found... Um, vines that I like. Um, I'm going to try a couple methods to make my own, but I think it'd be cool if you had vines crawling up. I'm actually looking to get some decent vines or make some for uh, after the first of the year, I'm going to be making a Tomb of Annihilation themed uh, dice tower. And I want to have vines and ivy climbing up on that. So Ivy, I guess, would be more appropriate for something like this, to have ivy growing on the outside. And, yeah, I know you could take uh, take some thin, like, twine or cord and dip it in PVA and then uh, run it through some, uh, some flock. I think uh, Scotty has a video tutorial on that. Oops. Every once in a while when I do these, especially on a big bunch of these I end up somehow skipping and getting the wrong course and one downside right now I'm seeing is eyeballing these is it, maybe it's the magnifier but they look like they're a little wider but that's okay all right one more set one more set and then we're done and this is I'm, I'm realizing as I'm getting ready to go into another section here um, I probably should have measured these a little more precise. Uh, you'll see why here in a moment. But just a few more bricks here. You know, if you make a mistake here, it's no big deal. All in all, it's just another brick in the wall. Hashtag dad joke. At this point, I'm just trying to fill the silence. It's like I said... With tedious brickwork or stonework, I'm usually listening to TV shows or podcasts. Hey, speaking of podcasts, since I know we got a lot of people here that are new to Mini Terrain Domain, I am one half of the podcast Something RPG ish with the RPG construct Drake. And uh, we've got about 18 episodes up on Podbean at somethingrpgist.podbean.com. Or you can find our podcast on iTunes and various other um, aggregators. It's Something RPG-ish. And we just talk about tabletop games, mostly D&D. &D. And uh, we've got, actually tomorrow night, we're getting together to record another episode. Yeah, Jeremy, I sometimes use a straight edge when I do this kind of brickwork, but this is older. Um, so, I already did this. Uh, it's older brickwork, uh, so I'm fine with it not being perfectly straight. Uh, so, here's where the second part of the tedium comes in, is I like to etch around. You're basically drawing the bricks. Now, you can... One of the reasons I like to go around them instead of just doing the, the verticals 
is it helps to kind of round out your bricks. And I'm see I'm doing it at an angle, so it's uh, kind of shaping and beveling each brick. So look, more tedium. We lost a couple more viewers. Oh, yeah, just to keep you from getting confused. So you can see now that this has become very flexible. But I'm just going to do a quick job on this because I can. I think it's still going to look great. But if you're not into the tedium of this, I suggest you just, I don't know, go check your email, check your Twitter feed, go feed the dog. Let the cat out. Come back in about uh, 10 minutes, and we'll be on to the next section. I find sometimes when I'm in this stage of a build where I start to find that imposter syndrome slip in, where I'm like, what the heck am I doing? I'm not an artist. Why am I doing this? This looks like crap. It's usually right about the time I start getting the last couple coats of paint, last bit of dry brushing, start putting in some of the details and the uh, the wash washes and stuff that I start to feel like, oh, okay, yeah, this is cool. So if you're new to crafting or if you've been doing this for a long time and you feel that, just know you're not alone. I think that's, I'm learning that that's common of, of uh, artists of many different mediums is that they get that imposter syndrome, that feeling that, why am I doing this? Why does people want to see this? Or why would somebody pay money for this? And I'm not expecting anybody to, to pay money for this in particular. Uh, as I said, this is a gift display piece. Um, you know, and when you see what I'm doing here with this, the way I'm going to break this out into the wall, um, this is actually something that if you were going to do gifts, like maybe you are a DM that wants to give your players some gifts for Christmas, your players, and you have a game where you have miniatures, Maybe you want to make a bunch of these for your players. You could do these in sections, um, and you could do this brick wall. So, you know, I'm doing, I said, the five-minute section. So, say you got four players. Um, let's show, like, my home group, and we've got eight players. Uh, you just make it 20 inches long. Do all your brick work, and then you just cut it out into sections. And uh, you can kind of double up, um, assembly line it. Or you could do each one different, you know, depending on what their character is. You know, maybe they're playing a swashbuckler rogue and uh, they spent some time as a sailor. So you want to give them a, a background that looks like a ship. So you could do like wood planking and you could do... Uh, like the railing of a ship, I would maybe put a uh, a cannon in there and a couple barrels and a crate. Uh, you could do inside a dungeon, have maybe a slime or or a skeleton. You can really put a skeleton in just about any of these. Uh, you could do one along the edge of a beach, in a jungle, on a boat, a plane, on a train. Do sci-fi terrain. You know, uh, Bill um, Wylock showed some uh, showed some great uh, sci-fi terrain recently that he did on his channel, Wylock's Crafting. Yeah, Jeremy, um, I've considered, especially with the amount of brickwork I do, I've considered doing. Um, 
green stuff world's uh rollers that they use for green stuff but you can adapt them for um use on the foam the reason i haven't is kind of in the same vein of why i have not yet why I, i've got a whole box of hearst arts molds that um ryan Beesicker from the craft tabletop crafters guild uh he lives near me um, we've met up a couple times over the last couple years and he, he gave me a bunch of first arts molds and honestly, a big part of it is I just don't have the room to set them all out to dry. Um, but the other reason I haven't done her starts molds is everything that's almost everything that is done with her starts. You can tell was done with her starts. And I think that there's that fear that using something like a texture roller is going to have a cookie cutter uh, look to it. Um, and maybe there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's not like everybody's using my tiles. I'm not selling my tiles or anything like that. So maybe there's nothing wrong with all my tiles looking like that. But there are also like, aren't they like 15 or 15 bucks a roller or something like that? Yeah, plaster, you know, that's a whole whole new thing, too, you know. Um, I've got some cheap plaster. I've got a, a carton of it over here in the drawer that I got shortly after I got the molds, and I still haven't done anything with it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being snobby. Because, man, being able to texture. Well, the other thing is, you know, so you, you cut your wall pieces, and then you run it through the roller, and if you don't have it perfectly straight, then your brick pattern ends up crooked um and then you have to you just waste that foam so i don't know i've also watched i know somebody in the tabletop crafters guild um they did a uh they made like a jig in in a little thing that they could push through and kind of turn it by hand and i thought of that if you kind of made these straight lines that your piece would follow that are adjustable. And then you have a, uh, um, you have a, a, an adjustable thing for the roller and then you could just crank it through. Chad says, you know, you could get a wooden dowel and burn your own texture into it. That's not a bad idea. Um, then it would be my own texture. But then there's still that, I don't know why, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny because I worry that, well, every piece is going to look cookie cutter. They're going to look the same. But guess what? I'm hand drawing this using the same technique as I do for most of my brick work when I do bricks. And honestly, I really do kind of want like the stone rollers because I don't think I'm as good as laying out the stone patterns particularly when you have those uh, almost like cobblestone -y kind of flagstone, um, different sized rectangular and square bricks, all interlocking and stuff. I'm just not as good as coming up with unique patterns. My brain, my brain tends towards symmetry or at least a semblance of symmetry. Um, so I end up making these symmetrical patterns just when I'm not trying to which I think is why I like these standard style bricks. Plus, of all the stone patterns, these are probably the quickest as I'm wrapping up about 20 minutes of, of hand texturing bricks. But guess what? Three courses left, and then we're on to rapid work again. And the rest of this will go uh, quicker. So hopefully everybody that I told to go get a snack will come back and see the rest of this. And of course, I'm going to rip this video down um, and I will post it up on the Mini Terrain Domain YouTube channel as well. The stream quality seems to have steadied out a little bit. It's not as HD as I would have liked. This sucks when I'm paying for high speed internet and then we've had some heavy winds go through and it shouldn't matter for for cable internet, but 
Apparently it does. All right, it's the last couple bricks. And there we go. All right, so there's our brick wall. Very, very twisty and flexy now. Uh, the YouTube channel, uh, G GV, it looks like the YouTube channel is Mini Terrain Domain, uh, same as the Facebook page here. If you click through the link where the video is for Mini Terrain Domain Facebook page, there is a link at the top um, that says watch a video that will take you right to the YouTube page. Uh. Uh, does anyone have a preference between mechanical pencil, pen, or regular pencil for widening? I don't, I think these things are, on one window, they're coming out of order. So I, I'm missing a bunch of comments. So I apologize if I'm not responding to you guys. All right, and of course, I'm going to hit this thing with the, I'm literally hitting it with my foil. Being a little careful up here because of the how weak this wall has become. So now, excuse me, now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right, this will be close enough. So what I'm gonna do, this is where I wish I had paid a little closer attention and lined them up. So I'm going to, I want to interlock the wall on the end in the corner. So I'm cheating it a little bit. Last time for the other one, I cut two separate sections and I did all the texturing on those sections. And then I wound up trying to fit them together. And I just ultimately wound up cutting to make the interlock. I thought this way, I've already got the interlock there. You know your pieces are going to line up where you want them to. My fear is that my bricks on the opposite side, because I eyeballed it, aren't quite in line with that. Oh, they turned out to be close enough. Boom. So, a little bit of roughness. And so, for our corner... not going together quite how I wanted it to. Oh, they were, that's why. They didn't quite line up right. So I wound up with a couple partial bricks sticking up. Just cut those out. Oh, 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 see, I just started to pull a section of brick out. That's on the bottom. We'll be all right. All right.
Now this is where I would have done a um, uh, what am I trying to say? Oh, yeah, that goes better. I don't know why it's doing it the other way? This is where I would have done like white glue for it. Um, all right, so let's see. All right. hot glue here. I turn the temp down because if you leave the glue shit, how did I have that? I only put, yeah, I went like this. So, I'm going to go just a quick little If you leave the glue on with the high temp you, uh, what I found is if you <laughs> forget that it's there um, it starts to boil and then you end up melting your foam horrifically. Um, I'm actually okay with the way this uh, has a little bit of roughness to it. It's going to look a little rough hewn in the painting. And before we paint, I'll hit this with the heat gun to get rid of the. Ooh, you know what? I put my wall together upside down. I cut the wrong side. Or did something weird because <laughs> it's actually supposed to go this way. Which means my capstones are now on the bottom. I could still do it this way. I just cut less off of each. That's fine. Got to square it up. All right, no problem, no problem. All right, so we're just gonna cut a little bit right from the corner here, and then I'm gonna make a mark here, and we're gonna go from here. This is where we do all that extra work we did, and you go, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" And so we pull that off. And then for this one, we're going to take a lot less off. But still enough. And then we're going to... Oops, we're going to connect up, connect up, connect up, connect up. I keep flipping out a view of the camera. All right. Just kind of hitting the edges a little bit. I'm trying to grip as much surface. Oh, I just broke off a brick. No big deal. It fits with the destruction. A couple more coming off. Anyway, I'm trying to hold as much of the surface area as I can. All right, believe it or not, we're actually getting really close to the painting portion. Um, so now we know, boom, that's going to fit right there. Like a beautiful, lovely little thing. Along that edge piece. Looking good. Okay, so I'm going to drop slop a dollop on here. I'm 
Man, the glue may not be hot enough. I'm going to turn this a little bit. Ouch! Yep, it's hot enough. It is hot enough. I'm just squaring along the back edge here. And, uh, yeah, that uh, looks good. So one thing I'm going to do to add a little extra durability here and I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Ted Nebbit. I forgot to get that while it was still hot. But I'm going to cheat something else here. All right, so I think we might go with some ivy up the middle here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a real thin bead. of hot glue along the base there but it's going to be concealed when we do our texturing and stuff because I like to put debris along the edge there so that's just going to give a little extra hold right there all right I'm starting to come together and yeah so now I think what we're going to do, i to let that glue, i let that glue dry. Um, I need the base. Actually, I'm going to wait on that. Cause, but what I'm going to do is we got to figure out. So these are uh, Woodland Scenics trees. And I'm just taking each little stick and twig and branch, kind of bending it in different directions. And uh, let's see, we'll go. give it a little bit of an upward curl. I'll turn this down and up. I'm going to try something a little different with this one. Uh, these woodland scenic trees, along with a few other pieces of flock that I got, were actually sent to me by uh, Justin uh, Hamanope. He's been around for quite a while. And... Uh, Uh, yeah, JV, JV, I'm not sure how you say that. But, uh, yeah, a couple of the bricks are actually going to go on the ground. Um, as you can see in the earlier version that I did, uh, there's some brick debris here. Um, let's see. So here, I've just got to be careful about um, where I put them so it doesn't interfere with the miniature. Uh, let's see. The other thing I'm trying to be careful of with this tree is I don't want to interfere with the space where the walls are or where the mini, I want to take away from the mini. So, but I want it to kind of flesh out a little bit or fill out a little bit. So I'm kind of creating this L shape with it. And we'll bring that up a little bit. I think that'll work good. I'll bring this over and bring this one over a little bit. Yeah. So there's where our tree's going to go. I'm trying something a little different with the tree that I haven't tried yet. So hopefully this will work. Um, but in the meantime, we are going to... See, this is where I normally, you know what? That'll be all right. All right. Ow. Okay. We're going to do the tree here in a moment. So I'm going to 
find my brush. Use this one. Decided I'm going to go ahead and do the the old Mod Podge and uh, Black Paint Jeremy Black Magic Craft. And we'll just give this a good good old coating. Now I found that the but you know what? I'm a dummy. I shouldn't have started that just just yet because I've got to let's move that out of the way. Cheating with the heat gun. Cheating with the heat. Uh, <laughs> just got done talking about using the, the debris. So, yeah, I want to get a couple of these bricks. And I'm just going to... Wow, those were completely opposite of one another. So use that one, the broken one, and this broken one. When cutting bricks for the debris, I like to get more than what I'll probably need. And just like before, I'm using the emery board. But this time I'm just kind of rounding out the edges because, oh, sorry, not on the camera. Uh, rounding out the edges because um, this is stuff that's been out in the elements. So it's worn. It's definitely weathered. All right. We're just gonna drop a couple of these in. to stop talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, just reading some of the comments. Yeah, we'll get to the cherry blossoms here in a minute. My plan is to um, my plan is to get the uh, Mod Podge on and then let that dry for a few minutes while we assemble the tree. All right, I think we got enough brick pieces here. One more little one. All right, and we're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a brick. And glue it into place. And then we'll take another little brick. And glue it in the place. And then we'll take this one here. Oh, I don't like that one. I like it better now. 
some nice natural breaks to it. Tiny little bit of glue. And then I'm gluing that across the top. One. Some of that hot glue out of there. As I take the piece completely off camera. So there's a couple of bricks there. And then we'll... Take... That's got way too much high glue on it. But oh, took too much off. As I said, I don't normally like to do the hot glue on these. All right. It's kind of neat. Seeing the uh, the evolution of uh, my crafting space here is the surface area has turned from neat to a mess. And there we go. Uncle Owl Bear fits in there nicely, which means just about any other uh, mini is going to fit in there well. All right, so back to what we were doing. Uh, I'm going to actually, let's see. I'll need that hot glue gun one more time. So, all right, let's go back to Mod Podge and the snot out of this. Get all up in, get up all in those bricks. And you can see I'm doing kind of a, a liberal coating. Now, this one nice thing about the Mod Podge, is it makes it uh, so that if I wanted to, I could easily uh, spray paint this whole piece. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. But it serves as a nice base primer. Technically, I don't have to black bomb it, but... It's an OCD thing. If I don't black bomb it, then I won't feel like I'm doing it right. Getting in all these rough edges. Somewhere, some of you are watching this and probably having a heart attack at my method of just slathering the stuff on. But trust me, I know what I'm doing. I'm comfortable with it. You should be too. All right. All right. I keep pausing so I can look over and read some comments. Um, you might be surprised once we get to the once we finish up the tree and get to the uh, actual painting of this piece, at how quickly I go with that. Or maybe you won't. But I paint quick. One thing that I think is really cool with these, these floating pieces out here, these broken pieces, is once the... Uh, the flocking is down is how awesome it looks with uh, like they're actually broken away and they've been sitting there for a while as the grass has grown up around them. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. I thought about streaming some music, but I don't want to get copyright slammed or anything, so. Oh, I forgot. I got a coffee here. I shouldn't be drinking coffee so late at night, but I forgot to grab a beer before I started. Look at 
go for a yingling about now. All right. Trying to stay in camera view for you guys. Hey, thanks, Jay. Glad you like the channel. And, uh, yeah, I haven't made coffee ground flock in a long time, but I still use it. I won't use it on this piece, but um, this is my uh, kind of fall mixture that I made. Um, it's a mix of yellow, orange, and red. Still has that little bit of a coffee smell to it, and I've got some uh, bright green that I use as well. Or darker green, actually. But, yeah, you can make uh, – I actually got the idea, I think, from uh, Nelson from Infinite Roleplay um, back when I started, first started my channel. And uh, he kind of turned me on to that. Yeah, you just take your coffee grounds um, after you've made coffee, and you want to dry them out really good because you do not want to them to get moldy. Um, but, yeah, dry them out really good. And then you mix them up with uh, mix them up with different colors of acrylic paint, and then spread them out and let them dry. And then you can kind of mash them through. I made a used a dowel, I think, as a homemade pestle, and mashed them through a strainer to break them up into smaller pieces. Yeah, this piece is, this could have used some pinning uh, if it were an actual play piece. I can see as I'm painting the mud hodge, it's flexing a lot. But it's a display piece. And I know my son, he's 17, he's going to uh, treat it as such. The downside is if it's not carefully packed when he goes off to school, was off to college if he takes it with him then yeah, it could get damaged so I'm just kind of mashing my brush into some spaces where I see pink showing through I should invest in some surgical gloves so I'm not always getting paint on my fingers but I don't care Yeah, my big thing with crafting on camera is I keep pulling, I keep pulling the piece out of the camera uh, sight. I should tip back this way a little bit more because I keep pulling it toward me, um, mostly because I have poor eyesight. Not a poor eyesight, but not as good. Whoa, well, not as good as it once was. So what what we'll do here in a minute? So I'm almost done mod podging basing this and then we're going to assemble our cherry blossom tree with a couple different methods and i've never done this before so we're going to find out together if it works i know uh if you're wondering uh if you've never done the mod podge uh, hey he keeps taking big clumps of that and just dolloping on there it's not going to go through it so fast, but I've been using the same Mod Podge for, I don't know, six, eight months. And I'm not going through it very quickly, so I'm not too worried about it. And this stuff is relatively cheap, less than five bucks for the, that container, plus the, the black paint I mixed in with it. Because you can't tell I'm just talking to fill the space. All right. I'm running out of dry spots to hold on. So I'm going to do something. There we go. Just jammed my, <laughs> my blade up in the bottom um, so that I can get these other sides. It's not really helping. All right. 
Well, I, again, I want to say thanks to everybody that's tuned in. Just checking this out. Um, there's 25 of you watching me for some reason. So hopefully you're learning something. Uh, or you're just entertained looking at what I'm doing and going, Oh, that's crap. I could do so much better. Watch me take my money out of my wallet and buy a game workshop terrain. I'm just messing. All right. Good enough. Ah, and I just put a fingerprint in it. Awesome. So let's try to cover that up. Okay. So the Mod Podge is done. Brush in the water. I will, I have admitted this publicly and I will continue to do it. Uh, I'm terrible at brush maintenance. Uh, prior to doing the stream, I grabbed my brushes that had been sitting in the water for about a week. But I buy cheap brushes. So it doesn't matter. All right. Now, let's do some tree work. Here's what I'm going to do that I've not done before. I've got this uh, moss. I think I bought this a couple years ago at uh, um, Hobby Lobby for, I don't know, four or five bucks for a bag of it. And then I just put it in a peanut butter jar. Uh, what I'm going to do is I want these cherry blossoms to be kind of filled out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue, hot glue, some chunks of this to the tree. And then we're going to put PVA on these chunks. And uh, dip it in the cherry blossom. That's what I'm going to attempt to do. I think it'll work. I don't see why it wouldn't. One, two, three, four, five, six. Grab a couple more pieces here. Just try to find pieces that I think look good. They're maybe a little, a little more dense, a little denser. Um, and kind of fit with the scale of the tree that we have here. I have a few pieces to pick from. This has a nice earthy smell to it. All right. I don't like that one. These things are great for bushes and shrubs and stuff, too. And if this technique works, then, hey, this is a way to even fill out trees and stuff, too. I'm sure I'm not discovering a new technique. Um, I'm just, uh, it's something I wanted to try. Yeah, that should be good. Let's shove our moss back in our jar. Okay. Let's move that up there and fingerprints again. Awesome. Okay. So now I just kind of figure out where do I want these to go? I kind of like the idea of some bare branches showing. I want this in a way that's going to look balanced. So what I'm going to do I'm just gooping up this here with hot glue And then there's some uh, well, these are crap. 
crap scissors. When my aunt passed away, I inherited a bunch of, uh, I not really inherit. I just grabbed from a box of her stuff a bunch of uh, old scissors that she had. So now I'm doing some topiary. There we go. So, you know, this will actually would actually work for uh, regular old trees, too. So now I've got this piece here. We're going to put something small-ish on there. So we will goop some more hot glue. I'm putting it on the top and the bottom. And let's just kind of press that in there. I like the hot glue for this application because I know it's a good secure fit. Uh, if I wasn't using hot glue, I might use uh, tacky glue um, as opposed to just plain old white glue. Uh, just because, oops, kind of rain in the hot glue. No worries, no worries. Um, because the white glue, when you're doing this kind of application, doesn't always stick the greatest. Um, all right, so let's see. I like this one for over here. Yeah, that'll look good. And then we'll have a bare branch kind of sticking in there. So I'm going to goop some more glue in here. Even a little bit there. Got wisps everywhere. Oop, dripping glue. I was a little too slow with the glue. There with the moss. Yeah, we'll do a couple more here. Nice thing is you can keep flexing these trees around. Um, this nice, oops, some foam in there. Uh, let's see. That was a little ratty. Um, it's bonsai trim. Oh, jeez. Just dropped my scissors. Bonsai trim that one up. And we'll shove that on the end there. So now, some of you may be asking, I thought you were going to do cherry blossoms. And others of you are going, I know what you're going to do. And that may be because I think I actually explained what I was going to do. So I don't know what I'm saying. But yeah, this is setting a base. Yeah, let's do that. For our cherry blossoms. Oh. See, the longer you let the glue gun sit, the more liquidy your glue gets. So you got to watch out for that. I've had times where I've messed up foam pieces because I let my glue basically boil. The hot glue boiled in the thing. Man, that looks really good just with the moss. Um, you know, maybe and sprinkle some different colored stuff on there, uh, flocking, but um, we're not going to leave it like that. I think we'll take this and knock it down a little. Actually, you know what I'm going to do with that? 
I'm going to take this down even smaller. And I'm going to, where'd it go? Right here. Oh no. The glue's so hot that I melted into the tree branch itself. And almost ruined my tree. I have to hit this carefully, I think, with the heat gun. Get rid of some of the wisps and one more last little piece and on to the next section. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy Lilly is also a an accomplished crafter. Um, who I've had the pleasure of knowing for a couple of years um, and have also had the pleasure of meeting in person uh, this past July. Check out his YouTube channel at Erasmus. I believe it's Erasmus Expeditions. Um, he runs some amazing games over there. And I hope to see some, some crafting and stuff on your channel too, Jeremy. All right. Here is our tree. Um, I'm going to make sure I kept my spacing good. Yep, spacing looks good. So, take a moment. There's a lot of debris here. Put these back in the jar. <laughs> now comes the fun part. All right. Coffee's getting cold. All right. Um, where is my container? You know what? I think I'm going to, I'll use this. This will work. So here's the part. We're getting closer with some of the other stuff. So I'm going to show you. And I'll have a link when this is on YouTube. But this is from Huge Miniatures. Uh, it was nice enough to send me some promo samples. This is the uh, cherry blossom. And then on the other piece, I used the uh, autumn leaves. And this is what I was talking about very early in the stream about, um, oh, no. What happened? Am I still live? I think I just somehow turned off my live stream. Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm still broadcasting. Okay. Whew. Sorry about that. Okay. I don't know. Okay, sorry about that. It looked like it looked like my live stream had stopped. Um, anyway, this is what I was talking about very early in the stream, where I was talking about the um, the difference between getting into real detail and kind of cheating it. Uh, this is um, this is uh, kind of like. I mean, you could go detail and have actual leaf scatter, but I think this gets the job done. I mean, as I've shown this piece a few times, I think it looks beautiful. So what we're going to do 
Oh, and these are the flocks that they sent me. Um, I used this one previously. I'm going to use this bright green uh, to go as a complement with this, along with some other stuff that I already had on hand. But be sure to check out Huge Miniatures, and uh, they have a um, a Kickstarter going on right now. I will have the link on the YouTube video, and I will also post the link on Facebook Mini Terrain Domain later as well. Um, I don't have a proper static glass grass applicator, so you're going to see some weird stuff in a bit, but here's what I'm going to do. As we get ready to do this portion of what we're doing, trying to get this stuff back in the bag will be interesting. So you can kind of see uh, what this stuff is like. Um, like many, many different types of flock, it's a kind of mixture of um, spongy material um, that is finely blended. I'm just making sure it's aerated, loose, for what we are about to do. Oh, there's my container I was looking for earlier. I could have done it in there, too. Actually, I think I will um, transfer this. Kind of like this a little bit better for this purpose. Uh, this is a brush that I don't use for a lot, so it'll be perfect for this. Um, paint tray. By the way, I got this stuff at Hobby Lobby, uh, white glue made in China. This stuff is not very good. We're gonna, the dollar store glue is a little watery, but that's good. I like to mix it for the water mixtures. That's probably way more than I needed. Um, but this is not my favorite for uh, assembling stuff. So... Let's, uh, I want this to be really sticky, so I'm not sure that I even want to add water. So what we're going to do, you guys probably already saw this coming. I'm just getting... The white glue all up in this moss. The nice thing is that white glue doesn't dry quickly. So I could probably do all of these, but I want to make sure. This is the other thing with it being... Uh, hot glued in place. I don't have to worry about it coming off while I'm doing this. And then, oh, I just flipped some out. I probably should have painted that one up too, or glued that one up too first. You know what? I think this is going to work. Look at that. Getting a nice, good cherry blossom effect on there. Yeah, this is going to this is going to work beautifully. So, let's go ahead Get this guy. Jeremy, I could definitely tell you would like this. Uh, you would like this uh, um, cherry blossom stuff. I know you do a lot of uh, Asian-inspired settings. Um 
this cherry blossom mix I could just see being wonderful for uh, some of your pieces that you do. And I'm just dipping it in. I don't mind that the green is showing through. Um, it's not bad. I don't think it really makes it look bad or anything. Uh, let's see on the bottom side here. Yeah, so. This is going to be a nice little cherry blossom tree. I think I'm going to go ahead and glue up the rest of these. Oh, no, that I'm sure is more than I needed. And we are just slathering the glue on. We want to make sure that our cherry blossom flock sticks to it really well. Now, one thing you see that I did in that other piece, and I'm going to do with this one, that I think really helps to sell the uh, addition of this, whatever it is, autumn or uh, the cherry blossom or any of the other types of flocking, is to have it scattered around like you know, cherry blossoms are known to shed their blossoms, and, and you have cherry blossoms all over the ground. Uh, same thing with autumn leaves. So you want to make sure you get some of that flock. Uh, that's going to be one of the last things that we do. Um, but definitely to spread that around a little bit. And then... I like that there's some bare branches sticking through. Do, 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 do. All right, once we get these cherry blossoms in place, we are going to Move quickly with the painting and flocking of the rest of it. All right. Let's blossom up. Definitely a bigger container would be beneficial here. Maybe even, uh, you know, putting some down on the bottom and then pouring some over top of it. Uh, one thing I do sometimes is I put paper down and then I can easily collect the flock to that spills over so I can, of course, reuse it.
And I'm just trying to cover as much of the green stuff as we can. I think I am going to grab a piece of printer paper here. And I'm just going to fold it in the middle. Base stuff is using as XPS. Yeah, about a bag of pre made trees. There's some ribbons for you. Shed them in slow motion. <laughs> trying to get as much of this loose stuff off before we call it set because I don't know do cherry blossom trees normally have I imagine they have like before they blossom they've got green leaves so it's perfectly natural that there should be uh, green showing through so we are going to Set this out of the way. Collect a bunch of that. And we'll set this out of the way for now. Cause... Now. Hit this up a minute. So one thing I do when I'm using my heat gun, one thing I do when I'm using my heat gun is I move it back and forth a lot because you can very quickly melt into your foam if you're not careful. So this heat gun is... Uh, It used to say on the side, I can't see anymore. It was actually one made for a uh, uh, scrapbooking and stuff like that. It used to be my wife's when she used to do that kind of stuff, and I grabbed it when I started doing crafting of my own. Um, so I don't remember the. It's it's probably some dumb. Uh, I can't quite see it. Like like uh, something embossing, embossing. So I don't know. It's all wore off. So I don't even know how much one of those cost. All right, that's all good. A drawer, whoops. My Dremel stand fell over. So now, crap, my paint tray. Oh, that was water. We'll use this paint tray. So we've got some... Black. And I've got some here with just, just a little water, more watery. Mix that in. And let's go with this brush. It's probably not enough. Well, maybe it is. This is that where I could get away with not black bombing it, but there's still enough paint showing through that. I want to black bomb it. It's an OCD thing with me. All right. One thing I pay attention to when I'm doing this is the cracks so that we don't have much pink showing through. This is where water waterier. waterier? Having water or your uh, paint 
it gets down in the cracks. The downside is you can't paint quite as quickly as what we're doing here tonight. Um, I had intended for this to be about a two-hour stream. Um, I honestly do think we can be done in the next 20 minutes, at least to the point where all the flock is in place and it's got to dry overnight, and I can take beautiful glamour shots to post on uh, Mini Terrain Domain Facebook page and share it to the Tabletop Crafters Guild and AbTab and all that stuff um, afterwards. But I think we can get that done in the next 20 minutes. I don't worry too much here in my crafting layer about paint splattering all over. You can see my keyboard. There's all kinds of paint splattered on it. It's just a little cheap Bluetooth keyboard. So I don't mind that at all. I like it. And the only reason I'm trying for a certain time is again i want to i'm actually going to keep i think when i put it on youtube i'm going to put a banner up um that uh this is to promote the kickstarter for huge miniatures where you can pick up some of these different types of foams that they've created uh, or foams uh clocks that they've created um and it's a review but i mean I like it. <laughs> I think I've kind of been reviewing it the whole time I've been explaining how much I like this flock. Um, and he's got quite a variety of it. I've long wanted to pick up from uh, Green Stuff World some of their uh, tree leaf punches. And I still want to do that. But, you know, they're pretty pricey um, and tedious, you know, to get actual leaves. And with this, you just have this, that kind of, uh, let me put it this way. I studied film making a little bit about uh, 10, 15 years ago. And um, about 10 years ago, I went out to Los Angeles and then up to uh, Visalia, California, which is up near Fresno, where I interned for two weeks on a movie set in pre-production. It was this little independent film. And uh, I worked closely with the set painter. And he could take MDF... And through a series of brush strokes and paint colors, make the MDF look like uh, old oak for baseboards and things like that. And uh, um, when taking direction from the uh, overall set director, we were we had taken some linoleum that we cut to we we built this. Uh, whole hallway section that was uh, there were this house was filmed in like three different locations and we built this hallway section we took this linoleum we measured it out we turned cut cut it upside down to fit in the place of the the hallway floors and he asked the director do you want this to look like wood flooring or do you want the suggestion of wood flooring and that was a very important distinction because it determined how long he was going to spend on it and how much detail he put in it. He said, well, there's no shots or detail shots of the feet walking across the floor, so a suggestion is fine. So that's what I'm getting at when I talk about with these uh, huge miniatures type uh, leaf clutter is it gives the suggestion of actual leaves without having the detail of actual leaves. All right, I'm going to go to the heat gun again. I don't know if Huge Miniatures is born out of the Tabletop Crafters Guild. I hold this at different angles while I'm doing this so I can see where it's uh, drying.
always keep your heat gun moving, even if it's slowly. To the next. Uh, I gotta shift my lights around a little bit because I can't see in here. Forgot to get my paints out ahead of time. All right, so we're gonna use some pewter gray, uh, some pavement, granite, and a touch of dolphin. Now. Where some paper towels gonna come in handy. Let's move this. Ouch! The, the heat gun, or not the heat gun, the glue gun is still on. Son of a gun. I just touched the glue gun. Alright, so we're gonna need this and this. So we'll start with our dark color first. I like to use these cheap uh Kind of coarse brushes here. Uh, let's see. My lighting kind of took a dive. Maybe it's the color. All right. So with the granite gray, or the pavement rather, um, Not so worried about it being a true dry brush, so we're not going to wipe the brush off on the paper towel. But we're going to, and it can sometimes be difficult to see the color difference, but that's okay. If the black shows through, that's shadow. Now that this is painted black, it's difficult to see. Hopefully as I continue along here, you'll be able to see these color differences. Let me try something here. Let's see if that helps a little. A little more light on there. So I'm trying to avoid putting it on too thick. Uh, one thing that I'm doing too is this whole outer frame is going to be painted in black just to kind of give it, because it is a, a decorative piece. So I'm not worried about carrying the wall texture or paint color down into there. I have to be careful because sometimes I get this too close to my eyes and it blurs out and then I can't see the variances. The nice thing about uh, medieval and ruins is you don't have to have necessarily a delicate hand at least on these aspects of it Carry that pewter down or pavement down there a little bit. And we're gonna. I'm not too worried about the nooks and crannies on this because one of the last things we're gonna do is we're gonna dump some uh, sand and pebbles in there for some additional flock debris. Some people advocate against using um, actual 
like sand and just not painting it. And sometimes I paint it, uh, but sometimes I like the look of sand uh, because this is a little bit coarser sand. So it, I think, adds to it because it's uh, like larger to pebble debris. It's not meant to be actual sand. And with these uh, pieces here, you don't have to worry about getting it on the ground because that's all going to be covered in flock. Flocka, flocka. That was a lame fuzzy bear reference. A little, little punch, little punchy. A couple hours. But this is what I do when I do this kind of thing. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to drive through it. Or I might work on a couple different things. Uh, you know, like I said, I use white glue sometimes. So, all right. My favorite part's coming up because the next step is going to be dry brushing. But before we do that, God, hit it with the heat gun again. Boom. Heat gun. Hey, did I just see that huge miniatures popped? Oh, Jay, how long have you been here? You've been just talking along, talking along, and I didn't even realize. So, Jay... Uh, if you're late to the stream, I've been really talking up your uh, your stuff here. Um, if, I don't know if you saw it or not, but our cherry blossom tree will be implemented soon. Thank you for sending this stuff. I'm excited to be able to showcase it in this live stream. And uh, as I said, this will be going up on YouTube tomorrow. Um. Hey, no worry, man. No worry. All right. I'm reluctant to use the same brush. I've got enough of these that I can go on to a completely different brush. Got a big batch of brushes off here on the side. Uh, let's see. All right. So now we're going to switch up to... Computer gray. It's a little watery. Ah, a little watery for dry brushing, but I haven't picked up any any new yet. This is my favorite part. This is where that imposter syndrome starts to go away as your details start to pop. As you start to go, yeah, okay, maybe I do know what I'm doing. Grandma Ab Tab. I have been very not well, and um, that is why we haven't been able to get together. Grandma Abtab is kind of in my neck of the woods these days. You need to PM me when you're going to be going back home. 
So we can still try to get together for coffee or something one day. Yeah, this is a very satisfying step. And you can see I, I do mine pretty roughly, but I think it still turns out exactly how I want it to. Sometimes you feel like you're covering up all those details that you spent time making be there uh, with the other colors. But it's all layering. It's kind of like, you know, I don't know music real well. I don't play music. Um, I have an appreciation for music, but I have no musical talent. So I was watching a uh, Hans Zimmer uh, live in Prague. And you see all these people playing these, uh, you know, you can hear the cellos and the violins and you hear the, uh, of course, the drums and you hear uh, all these different instruments. And then there's one person that's playing uh, like a, a flute and you're like, I can't even hear that. And then you listen carefully and you start to pick out the flute and you realize that without that flute, there that music would sound completely different because it's layered in and complementing all these other uh, musical elements and that's kind of what's going on here with the uh, dry brushing all your different layers complementing one another a little bit more because this isn't this is very very wet so very watered down paint. Uh, it's not going on quite as dry. It's taking a little bit longer. All right, a couple more Colors, then we'll start hitting some flock in here. All right, just about there. Now, if this were, you could go that extra step if you wanted before hitting some of the dry brushing and actually color some of these bricks, um, you know, with different colors. I know uh, various people have those methods that they do. Or sometimes I'll do these, like, greenish washes, uh, particularly with, like, sewer or dungeon-type tiles. What was that, Jeremy? You accusing me of getting all allegorical? <laughs> Whoa, see, it started to go a little thick. The nice thing is, the stuff does dry lighter than what it first goes on as. And honestly, with a piece like this, it's the. Uh, it's the uh, flocking that actually makes it kind of bring it ties it everything everything together. It's like uh, the dude's rug. It really ties the room together. Um, all right, so that's that for the dark colors. Now I'll fold this over. Now we're gonna go with a granite gray. I think that's what I said. This, yeah, granite gray. It's if you look in the right light, it has an almost uh, it has an almost bluish gray kind of hue to it. The downside of these cheap brushes is 
that the uh, bristles come off. See, now, now we're starting to pop. Pop, pop. First one that tells me what that's a reference to. Pop, pop. First one in the comments that tells me what that's a reference to. Gets 100 bonus experience points. Matt Smith. Sneaking up in here. Czar of happiness. Czar of happiness props. Matt Smith, best known as the designer of the Acquisitions Incorporated set pieces. I as have been honored to have had him as a guest on a Brigade Con panel, viewable on the Mini Terrain Domain channel. Thanks for stopping in, Matt. You must be bored. Or you're getting snowed in out there in Washington. I heard you guys got some snow. Getting snow before Michigan. We're getting close to the flocking stage. I, what I thought was going to be a two-hour build is turning into a three-hour build. You know, that's okay. Now, I wish I could teach my, my techniques here. Um, uh, Paige! I do believe Paige is the first one to get the reference. Paige, you get 100 bonus experience points. See if your DM will let you apply those to your character. Yep, pop, pop. That's from uh, Megatron. Megatron? Mega. Mega. Oh, crap. See, now I'm losing it. I'm going to lose my XP. Uh, Magnitude. That's his name. Whoop. The character Magnitude on uh, Community. This community has some excellent D&D &D episodes. So one of the things I'm trying to do in this new year is get back to my route. So I'm going to keep running games, but I'm hoping to have a lot more crafting stuff, do some of these live crafting. Um, this was intended to be uh, on streamed on Twitch, but I just couldn't handle the upload speed for some reason. My internet, we're having some high winds and some storms here in Michigan that I think, think may be... Uh, interfering but the plan is to have a uh, occasional uh, maybe a weekly stream on uh, twitch called uh, guild artisan so keep an eye out for that because i definitely want to do a lot more crafting stuff um, it was very awesome of huge miniatures to reach out to me um, and Jay, if you're still here, uh, it looks like you are here, uh, yet down in Ohio, we share similar weather patterns. Um, when I post this up to YouTube tomorrow, I'm going to put a, I'm going to lock a, uh, banner in place that has a link to, uh, the Kickstarter plus down in the description as well. Uh, check out the, actually, if you could, I don't know if it'll let you, but if you could put the link to your Kickstarter, go ahead and put it right here in the, in the chat. Matt might want to get him some of this stuff. All right. I'm really liking how that's starting to look like some stone there. We're going to take it one step further in a minute. Um, my pre-mixed wash. Is all washed up. So I'm going to do just a couple little dollops of black. Squirting in some water. And let's see. Yeah, that'll work. 
I like to test it out on a little piece before I go. So because we've been dry brushing, we don't need to worry about hitting this with the heat gun. There it is, Huge Miniatures. was able to put your link up in there. Check out the Kickstarter for that. All right, this is going to give it some of that dinginess. And as I said earlier, I will post glamour shots on Mini Terrain Domain, um, on Absolute Tabletop. I'll share it out there as well as the Tabletop Crafters Guild um, showcasing the final product after all the flock has dried. So that's going to be the part we're going to finish up with. We're definitely going to use the PVA to uh, set all of that in place. I wonder why Facebook would let me. I mean, Facebook, I guess, isn't as demanding. It's compromising on some of the... Uh, the quality of the video feed, but my Facebook would let me stream and uh, Twitch wouldn't. All right. So one thing I may do um, kind of at the end after everything's dried, I may still hit up some of these edges with this dolphin gray. Um, I'll do a little bit of speed drying here. Definitely acrylic would never use oil paints on crafting. All right. Sorry about the last in there again. Okay, so. The uh, always ubiquitous, one of the primary colors every crafter should have in their uh, collection of paints is burnt umber. As I'm going to... Alright, stuff's a little thick. I'm as I said, it's I'm in Michigan. It's getting toward uh, getting toward uh, winter. So, and my crafting layer is out in my porch. So it gets uh, my paints tend to get a little colder out here if I'm not out here. I try to come out here every day though. Uh, between gaming and crafting and other stuff, uh, so that I'm running a heater. This is where the ground cover is going to go, and I just want, it just helps if there's a, an earth color under there. Um, you can go with different colors and do different techniques, um, but yeah, this is just going to help. Where We're going to lay down the flock. Now, don't sue me, Jay, Hughes Miniatures. When you see me put the static grass on, I don't actually have a static grass applicator, um, but I think this short grass still looks pretty good, uh, just kind of without having the true static application. Um, 
I've been wanting to try building one for a while, actually. I've seen a few tutorials on how to make your own. Um, I get a little gun shy around electrical stuff like that, <laughs> homemade electronics. So maybe that's why I haven't done it yet. All right, and I'm going to be too late when I finish this up and still be able to, there's some brown on there, be able to have a couple beers, or at least a beer, before I go to bed. It's definitely getting too late to be drinking coffee. I just realized I'm going to make sure I'm still showing this on camera and not off camera with it. All right, so did that. Can you guess what's next? Can you guess what's next? That's right. It's another heat gun. As I said, not that brush. Where did the other one go? There we go. Said I'd probably hit this up just a hair with the uh, dolphin gray after I did the the wash on it. Not hard to build a stratic grass applicator. I Called through a few DIY videos to build one this past summer. Yeah, you didn't use any on Omu. I wonder, was it the scale? Because Omu was such a, a smaller scale. I can see where the static grass might seem a little overkill with that. A momentary switch in it. Yeah, I like the idea of a momentary switch. The one I saw was using one of those, uh, yeah, like Jeremy said there, uh, using one of those handheld uh, um, electric uh, mosquito zappers. So yeah, I'm just hitting up some of these, some highlighting some of these edges here with the uh, highlighting some edges with this dolphin gray. Nothing too outrageous. That's done, and now this is where I need another brush. Where is my all right? This is where we're gonna get weird. Well, not really, not really gonna be weird, but I need there's that piece of paper. This piece of paper. Why is that blue? Why in the heck is my glue blue? All right, so this is the cheap dollar store stuff that, oh, yeah. 
Use that for watered down glue. That's that doesn't even look like glue. I don't know what that looks like. If I do, what am I gonna say? Alright. Whoa. Oh. I so a lot of that coming off. Now I know I didn't paint the I didn't paint up the the base of the tree here. Ouch, that's hot glue. Um, but I actually like the way these trees look without being painted. So Okay. Now. Oh wait. <laughs> I forgot. I've got some already out. Uh, still sticky. Oops. That was sloppy. So now I'm just laying down some PVA. Because this is where all our grass flocking is going to be. And I'm actually not doing the uh, huge miniature static grass at the moment. Because I'm going to put down a base of blended turf, which is a woodland scenic blend. And then I want there to be patches of the static grass. I actually don't mind if it gets up on top of, you know, crawls up the, the blocks at all. You can see this is a very precise science. A lot of it is confidence in my brush hand. I've done this enough that I feel confident for the most part that my brush is going where I want it to. So I can confidently make rapid applications. Well, I got in there. A couple of the thin spots will fill out. Yep. All right. Let's move this out of the way. So I am using, as I said, uh, I already kind of pulled some out to the side. Oops, I forgot I wanted to put this down too. We're sprinkling a, a few of these. And then, this is the Woodland Scenics Blended Turf. And you see I've got this on my paper. Don't be afraid if you've got something to collect all your uh, flock to just go ahead and put more 
go mound it up on there. Now again, if I wasn't doing a speed build, I would probably do this in sections um, and then let it dry. So there, I don't know why my lighting took a dump. Is it just me? It's like my brightness on my camera went way down. But, see, I love how those rocks start to peek out through the grass once you lay that down. So that's one of my favorite techniques uh, to do with this. My, my minotaur seems to have vanished. I was going to show you my minotaur that I did quite a while ago with that same technique but so that's that base bit there and then of course as i showed you before oh excuse me as i showed you before there's our rocks all that flock on the paper here pre-folded do 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 and doodly do Collect that up, and we'll use that for the next flock application. It's flocking great, man. All right. So what I want to do here is figure out where I want this static grass to go. So I know, I know I want some sticking out of this hole. I want to put it here, and I want some kind of peeking out here and there. So I'm just kind of visualizing where I want to see patches of this brighter colored grass. I like it coming up around some of these pieces. Jeremy says, oh boy, it must be you just heard my uh, flocking great comment. Come on, Jeremy. I know that you are all about a good pun. Don't pretend that you're not. When it comes to this like patchy spots of static grass i draw inspiration from my own lawn um i've never really like fixed it but there's always been patches of different grasses growing and kind of up along the edge here you gotta be careful because it's starting to pull up the other flock all right now this is where I wish I had a static grass applicator. I don't, so this stuff goes weird when you try to do it by hand. Uh, if anybody has a better method, um, I'd love to hear it because it just naturally kind of clumps together. But I'm deliberately going with this brighter color. Um, and I forget what the color is, Jay. Um, I know you sent me this, like, medium kind, um, and then this brighter color. It's like a summer grass or whatever. But I thought it was a nice blend with the complement with the cherry blossoms. I see these 
these little clumps form, and I want to be careful not to get those. Where I really want to use the static grasses is putting dollops of glue down on wax paper and making uh, um, static grass clumps for terrain and miniatures and whatnot. Oh, that's actually a good idea, Jay. It says you can charge up a balloon with static electricity and hold it over. Uh, maybe I don't have any balloons handy, uh, but I'll have to try that technique. But maybe with it, you know, in the winter time here in Michigan, um, you get uh, you get uh, the static charge builds up when you walk across the carpet. So. Maybe I'll just scoop my feet across the floor. But I find that when I do this next step, that it actually helps. Because I'm inverting it. Um, I think the glue went on a little thick, but that glue will dry clear. Better dry clear. Um, and if it doesn't, we'll fix it. Yeah, this happened when I put the other stuff on. Uh, because of the, the static grass is so thin um, and the glue is so white, it looks like it's not going on very well but I was very pleased with how this one turned out um, it blends in nicely um, in the photographs you can tell really well I don't know how you make this stuff Jay but it's beautiful so those those brighter patches will tone down as the glue dries um, so we're just about to wrap it up here folks a um, little bit on the long side is what two and a half I don't remember when I started Two and a half, three hour stream. Um, I know that's right, not right. The one I've been watching to monitor the feed says that it started an hour ago. Yeah, mossy grass, that might be the one. Um, you didn't write it on the bag, so um, I wasn't sure which one it was. I, I can check the email um, and I'll put the proper one in there uh, when, when I. Uh, post it, post up the pictures. So the last little bit of flocking I'm going to do here, drawing from this same little bit of glue that I had, is I'm going to hide, as I mentioned way back when I glued this in, is I'm going to hide the uh, hot glue seam here. Actually, this isn't the last little bit. I forgot there's one other thing I got to do. Yeah, wherever you want, whatever you're going to base with. Just dab in there with the glue. I'm going to fill that corner out just a little bit more. I realize I'm holding off the camera again. And this time... This this time, let's see, a little bit of rock. That over there. Where did I put my folded paper? Grabbed this out of my backyard a couple years ago when I started crafting. A mix of a uh, coarser sand, coarser sand. That sounds like a uh, something that's like RPG related. 
coarser sand. The only sand for coarsers. So I want to be a little, see, again, this is where I would do it differently if I was not doing a speed build because some of that other glue is still wet. So you could end up with sand getting down in there. And again, I know some people don't like the idea of using real sand, but I think it works. I like the way it looks, and that's what matters because look at that. The buildup of sand and debris. So now we got one last little thing left. Is we're going to drop some dollops of glue in some key locations. What are you doing now? Well, it's the next to the last step. And I may touch this up more after the whole piece is dried. And I've had a chance to look at it. But this. And I know one thing I will touch up is once everything's dried is I'll hit that whole outer edge with some, some black. But this is for... Yeah, I know I'm going hog wild here, but I want to make sure this stuff sticks in a way that looks kind of natural. Oops, I forgot to pour my sand in there. All right, looks like it's going to be a gathering of, of cherry blossoms instead of sand there. Oh, we forgot the test fit for old Uncle Owl Bear here. Old Uncle Owl Bear fits in there just lovely. So we got one last thing before we call it a night. Put all that back. <clears throat> and that is. Oh, I gotta find a particular glue. There it is. Yeah, Matt, I definitely like that. Um, Jeremy, thanks, Jack. I'm glad you like it. Uh, Jeremy, or no, Matt, yeah, I definitely would like to get on chatting. I'd like to do um, both offline just chatting with you, and um, I'd like to have you on to do kind of a, a co-crafting thing. Um, we could both be working on something at the same time. I don't know why my super glue keeps doing this. Oh, there we go. It's leaking now. Last time I did this, I glued some flock to my finger. But for such a narrow or tiny point of contact, 
Um, I like the super glue best for this. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. What happened? My hole filled up. My hole got. I just cleared that. What the? All right, hold on. This is not cool. The hot glue got in the way. Yeah, this is embarrassing. The last step, and I can't get it to freaking work. Are you kidding me? All right, Matt, I will reach out to you uh, in the future. It's a little tricky with the holidays coming up, but I will reach out to you and we'll figure something out. All right, so it looks like I'm going to have to uh, let some of this dry up a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold it in place because um, I'm going to have to drill out. Once that all dries, I'm going to drill it out. Um, but the tree will go here. Um, actually, I've got to rotate it this way. Yeah, the, the super glue just ate that. I'll have to put a pin in it, literally. Not just, like, put a pin in it until later. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, kind of what we're looking at right here. And then uh, old Uncle Owlbear is going to sit right in there amongst the blossom so that's it thanks matt jeremy uh jay of course from huge miniatures for supplying this awesome flocking um my finger is super gluing to the base so i gotta move it uh thanks everybody who tuned in uh, and hung out. Jeremy, I think you were here for the whole thing. So thank you for that, man. Um, thanks, everybody who tuned in. Uh, if you're not watching it on Facebook, this will also go up on YouTube probably tomorrow. Be sure to look in the comments section here on YouTube or on Facebook and down in the, uh, the beard um, of the video on YouTube, where I'll have a link to Huge Miniatures Scenic Flock and Basing Materials Kickstarter that ends this Friday. Um, but I'll be sure to keep an eye out for uh, future stuff that Huge Miniatures is going to be doing. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'm Jake. This has been Mini Terrain Domain. And, of course, as we like to say when we end all of our videos, Mitter Dad.